This is a 2020 Nissan Altima all-wheel drive platinum trim edition. Today we're working with our friends at Nissan of Mankato in beautiful Mankato, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys in a ride. ride. And today, Nathan, what are we taking a look at? Today we're taking a look at the 2020 Nissan Altima with the Platinum package and it has the 2.5 liter engine in it. And it's all wheel drive. There you go. But say, before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the cars, trucks, and SUVs that are out there, plus learn how to use all the technology that's built into these new vehicles, and you love cool collector car stories, take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right, Nate. So what do you say? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right, well, welcome to our detailed review on the interior. We're gonna cover the driver's information system and the infotainment system and a little bit on the uh, climate control. So, starting over with the driver's information system, I'm talking about this little center area in the middle. Um, and to control that, you're gonna use the left arrows on the left, the arrows on the left side of the steering wheel, as well as the OK button and the back button. So, the way Nissan has this set up is that you're gonna see two little arrows, one pointing left and one pointing right. And that means you can use your left and right arrows. Now, in a screen where you can, there's more features available other than what you're seeing, you'll see this little up and down arrow right here. And in fact, there'll be a little orange dot that shows up as well but it does disappear fairly quickly and leaves you just with the up and down arrows. So this is the part of the screen between the blue lines that you're gonna change. The top and the bottom pretty much stay the same. You got your clock, you got your speed limit reading sign, and then you've got your temperature, outdoor temperature. Down here, you've got how many miles you have left on fuel, your gear selector, your, your gear selector indicator, and then the number of miles on the car. Uh, down here, it does always tend to show your um, your media source. Okay, so since I have up and down arrows, I'm gonna use the up and down arrows in the steering wheel, and I'm just gonna go down. So here I've got my average speed, which is five miles per hour, and then my digital speedometer. If I go down again, I actually get a completely blank screen. So you can customize it to have nothing if you want. I'm gonna leave it right here. Now, I'm gonna go right. Okay, this takes me to the economy page. Now, you notice there's no up or down arrows. This is what you get. And it says press OK and hold it to reset. Okay, you can watch your fuel economy. So, I'm gonna move on, go on, go to the right button again. Now, I'm on information screen and I get my trip. I can go down because I have those little up and down arrows again. So, I'm gonna go down. And now I have tire pressure. And actually, if I'm driving, the whole car appears and it shows pressure for each tire. Go down one more. I've got my speed limit sign if I want that to be a main thing. Okay, and then I'm back to trip. Okay. It's interesting to know that there's not two trip meters. There's one. Okay, I'm going to go to the right again. And this is my navigation screen. I have a compass and the picture of the car. And it tells me what road I'm on. If I set a destination, then it will actually appear, I can have more options, and it will actually show me the turn-by-turn -turn directions that um, are coming from the navigation. It's over here. Turn right after 1,000 feet onto Lake Street. So now I got the little arrows, up and down arrows that show up once my navigation route has been started, and I can get my turn-by-turn. If I go into another one, it's just two screens. I either get this screen or I get the turn by turn. But you can have that show up in your driver's display. Okay, moving over one more to the right. I get my media. If I press OK, 
I can then toggle through my sources. Now, if your phone is connected, you'll have some more options that show up. Right now, um, Auxiliary is wondering if you have a USB or a media device that you're connecting through the 3.5 millimeter jack, okay? Uh, but it will automatically detect which one it is, okay? Now, in addition to that, let's just say I go to Sirius XM Satellite, okay? I can use the forward and backwards arrow on the steering wheel to change my presets, all right? I can use the back button, all right? And on the back button here, I can get, if I go back to source, I have to press OK button, I can get my FM radio, I press OK, and now I can use those same forward and backwards button to change my presets. So you have pretty good control over your uh, media systems in the car just from the steering wheel. Okay. Now, the nice thing is I don't have to go backwards or anything. I can just press the right arrow and go to the next menu. Okay. Now, this is your Pro Pilot Assist. And I do have a couple of options because I have those up and down arrows showing. So, I'm going to press down. And here's it tells you everything that's on. So, the forward sensing camera is on, which is used for a couple of the different safety systems. Your blind spot's on and your lane assist is also on. Now, down below that, it says press OK for menu. So if I press OK, I can now change some of these things. So if I press OK on lane, I can turn on or off lane departure warning and lane departure prevention. So usually, kind of like it that way myself, that way it's not grabbing your steering wheel for you, but you're warning, you're, you're being warned that you're crossing the lane. I use the back button and I can go over to blind spot, okay? Now, not only can I turn it on or off, but I'll show you this. Over here on the left-hand side, on the black plastic of the mirror, there's a little light, and this is your warning. So I can change the brightness. Right now, I have it set to bright, but if I turn it to dark, it'll actually come on and show you how much, what, you know, what it looks like. If I change it back to bright, it comes on a little brighter. So maybe at night, you want that a little dimmer. All right, so I'm gonna hit my back button. And I'm gonna hit my back button one more time. Emergency brakes. So here you can adjust, you, you can have turn your uh, front brakes on or off. And if you do that, you're gonna get a warning in your dash, uh, your dash here, okay? And if you do the other one, it does an emblem in the RPM gauge. So those are the three things that uh, you can change in that setting. So if I go back here, um, I don't have any more icons, so if I click the down button, it just goes back to the menu screen here. So, but it's a quick view of which, uh, which of those systems are on or off, because it will tell you if they're off. Okay, I go to the right one more time. This is uh, all your basic settings. So in here, the VDC settings, if I click on it, this is basically your traction control on or off. So that's interesting because that's a driver's information button as opposed to a physical button like we see on most cars. Mm -hmm. But that's where it is, okay? Uh, if I go, whoops, I keep hit, forgetting to hit the back button. Here's all of your driver assistance. So steering assist, on or off. Emergency brake, on or off. Uh, lane departure, blind spot, speed limit sign on or off. Your parking aids, because you do have front and rear parking sensors as in addition to your camera. Rear cross traffic alert on or off. Driver attention on or off. A timer alert if you want to set a timer. Low temperature uh, alert. That would be, I would presumably, for your motor. And then chassis control. So we'll take a look at just a few of these. So if I'm on chassis control, I hit the OK button. And now I can turn the advanced trace control on or off. Uh, I can go to the tire pressure setting here, and I can change which unit it's in. Hit the back button here, hit the back button again. Your clock, okay? I can change the format and change it to 12 or 24 hour. Here, if I go to auto, I can have auto, manual, or I can select a time zone. Hit the back button again. One more time. Vehicle settings. Let's take a look at this one. Okay. Here you can take a look at your lighting if you want uh, different things on or off. I won't go through all these, but you would just press OK um, to get them on or off. Uh, if I do accent lighting, I can click the upper 
the up arrow to get the accent lighting on and make it brighter. Hit the back button again. Uh, auto headlight. Um, I This has auto headlights and auto high beams as well. And then it has a delay for turning your lights off so you can get a little extra light and you can preset that for different amounts of time. Hit the back button again and then I'm basically to the end of my list. So I'll hit the back button again here. Turn indicator, you can do that. Um, if you hit the stock, it'll stay continuous or give you three flashes. Okay, you can set the locking on your car. Again, you just press the okay button to change these, scroll through them and, and change them. I'm gonna hit the back button again. Wipers, this does have auto rain sensing windshield wipers. Okay, and speed dependent. You can turn that on or off. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on because it's a really nice feature. Driving position. If I press OK, I can have the driver's seat slide backwards on an exit, which is a really handy feature. So I will leave that one on. We'll press the back button. Rear door alert. Okay, horn and alert, alert only or off. Okay and remote engine start you can actually tr disable that if you don't want that on okay i'm gonna hit the back button and then you have a maintenance button here that you can look at your oil control system your oil and filter your tire or other now it's interesting i'm gonna go to tire because you can go in here and you can it'll it'll actually calculate how many miles you have on your tires which i'm not sure i've seen that before interesting feature all right, I'm going to hit the back button here, other, okay, and this is, must keep track of, um, I don't know what other is, to be honest. Someone knows they can leave a comment in the description. Okay, let's go back again. Okay, so under main menu selection, this is where you can customize some of the stuff on your screen. Okay, we'll go back again. Auto turn notification, you can have that on or off for alerts. Just press the OK button. And we'll go back again. Cruise screen transition, on or off. There's a little transition that happens. Welcome effect, you can have that on. And uh, you can have animation on and the gauge is on. Otherwise, the gauges won't spin around like they did when we started it up. Light and wiper guidance, okay? So you can have the light mode guidance on or the wiper guide mode guidance on or off there. All right, we'll go back. Here's where you set your units, like if you want, you know, gallons or liters, that kind of stuff. Key linked settings, okay? So if I do that and I turn it on, okay, current key is number two, or I can turn them off. All right, hit the back button again. And then of course you can do a factory reset. Uh, that's the last one and we're back to the home screen. Okay, so on the infotainment screen to start off with it's an 8 inch screen It is it is a touch screen. It has Apple CarPlay Android Auto Bluetooth uh, And you, you can uh, connect to the blue uh, to the Android Auto Apple CarPlay with the USBs down here Okay, there are some physical buttons. You have power on or off or push volume. You have tune and scroll Okay, so if I do this, I get my radio, even though I'm on my navigation screen. Okay. Down here, you've got some more physical buttons. This is a dimmer for the screen, so it's separate from the driver's information center. So if I push it once, it, I, it'll dim. If I push it again, it'll give me control, and then I can just use this button to make the screen brighter or dimmer. All right, you've got a like a skip forward, skip backward button. You do have a, a sh shortcut right to audio. And then you can use from here, you would use your um, your touchscreen. So I can go to sources here and I can change my sources. I can go through here and I can customize the audio sources if I want. Okay. Uh, there's a physical or a, a touchscreen back button. There's also a back button right here. Okay. In addition to that, you have a menu button. If I push that one, brings me back sort of to the main menu. And you can see the three little dots down here, which means I have three screens. So if I go here, I can uh, customize my home screen a little bit. Okay, we'll just take a brief look at that, but you can customize widgets. You can also customize shortcuts. Okay. All right, if I go continue on down here, you notice when I go to the main menu, 
my phone info audio menu map connections settings all show up as little icons if i want a shortcut to the map i just click here and then one of my favorite things is the camera and i'll show you why okay so here's my forward facing camera right now and of course it has swivel dynamic guidelines and i love this 360 view right here but when someone is around the car now rob did this earlier and i was just watching it'll actually light up uh, a trapezoid shape um, showing you where the person is and if they're close enough it'll actually show you what sensor they're close enough to okay now if i press this again okay i get a close-up of my driver's side or my passenger side but watch this look how much detail you can see i mean i can see the spokes in the wheel i've not seen that before most of those side views of course they show the whole car front and rear this is showing just the front but wow that is crystal clear really nice okay and if i press it again okay and i put it in reverse i get my backup camera and now my backup guidelines are in the back. It does come with navigation. That is on voice command. You can vo use voice command for your uh, your audio as well, uh, but you can't for your um, climate control. All right, I'm gonna go back to menu for a minute and I'm gonna go just to settings. All right, so in here, you can look at your connections like Bluetooth or um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, USB, whatever. Got a shortcut to your navigation. Here's where you can change some of the sound. This does have speed sensitive volume, so you can adjust that. That's highlighted right now. So if I go down here, now it's highlighted, sorry, and I push, now I can change the speed sensitive volume. Push it again, now I can scroll up here and change it. So a lot of things you can do with this button right here. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button, okay. Um, if you don't like all the beeps and everything in the car when it's talking to you, this is where you can go in and set this. Same way, okay? Or you can just touch it, and then you hit sample. the plus button. Sample, sample. And you can uh, do it that way as well. But it's actually easier for me, at least, using that one. All right, let's go back again. Um, you can do some things with your clock, and you, we saw that a little bit earlier on the, on the um, driver's information center. Okay, we can customize audio sources. I'm gonna go over here. You've got the Nissan Connect Services button here. You've got uh, system voice. So if you wanted like initial voice prompts on, short voice prompts on or off, best match list, voice preference, you can have a female or a male. And then you can adjust the speech rate, which is usually, I've not seen where you can ever adjust the speech rate. Okay. Uh, you can go into the camera settings here, moving object detection, and that's what I was talking about while Rob was walking around the car, on or off. And of course, you can go into the display settings, and you can change the brightness, the contrast, the tint, the color, the black level. All right, we'll hit the back button again. Hit it one more time. Um, I can go to others. Now this, you, so now here again is not a spot to uh, adjust your language, the units, the type of keyboard, that kind of stuff. On the display, you can uh, adjust, um, you can turn it off completely and then push this button to resume it, okay? You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the black level in that as well. We hit the back button. Then we just, uh, we have Apple CarPlay, that's where your app would show up. Uh, and then Android Auto, if you had an Android Auto phone. I already hooked my phone and enabled Apple CarPlay, so that's why that's showing up. But if you hooked your phone up, it would then show you the same thing. Okay, uh, that's about it on the uh, infotainment screen. Moving briefly down to the climate control. Um, this is dual zone auto climate control. You're, I like the large digital reading. Um, this is the temperature control for the driver, temperature control for the passenger. I really like it that the sync button is physical and it's right here, so then the temperatures match. Your AC button is here, defroster's here, fan speed right here, which gives you a nice graphic display. Your mode selector here, and then your recirculatory button here. In addition to your dual heated front seats and your heated steering wheel.